Hey everybody, it's Miss Cristobal. We're back in science, properties and materials, chapter three, lesson three, evaluating strength test evidence. In our first activity of our lesson, we will graph our test results. We will use a graphing tool just like what you see on the left. If you remember back in many lessons ago, we used similar graphing tool from our sticky test results. So first, let's review how to use it. So this one is called strength test results. And in our packet, we will include the link on how to access this graphing tool online. So you can see the arrow, there is a row for each ingredient that we tested, gelatin, flour, cornstarch, and corn syrup. And when you click the plus sign next to an ingredient, a box pops up where you can enter the number of washers the ingredient could hold. And as soon as you enter the number, the tool instantly graphs your results so they are easy to compare. Remember, this graph that we are using is called a bar graph. Are you ready to graph our strength test result? Here is our graphing tool. Remember, it's called strength test results. And I know Ms. King Crosby just finished showing you her strength test and she shared me her results. So here they are. So for gelatin and water, she told me she got 14 washers. Flour and water, she got 10. Corn starch and water, she had five. And corn syrup, she had four. You can see on the right, it instantly graphed our results for all the ingredients that we used in our strength test results. I'm wondering, which ingredient got the most? Which ingredient got the least? Were you surprised by the strength test results? So engineers use graphs to look for patterns in their data. When engineers make bar graphs, they look to see if the bars on their graph look the same or different. When you look at your bar graphs, you can look to see if each mixture held the same or different number of washers. In our next activity of our lesson, we will search for evidence in a reference book. We have gathered some evidence by observing and doing our strength test. Now we will look for evidence about ingredients in the reference book. So this is the reference book that we will read about today. It is called Handbook of Interesting Ingredients. Use this page in your packet for today's lesson. So go ahead and look for this page in your packet or not. If you don't have this, go ahead and get some paper and something to write with. I will show you how we can look for evidence about strength or any other properties we think will make good glue. First of all, we're going to read about gelatin, but I want to go over what we're doing today. So I'm going to read the directions of this worksheet. So the title of this worksheet says, Gathering Evidence from the Handbook of Interesting Ingredients. Here are the directions. First, look through the book and find evidence that each ingredient in the table will make a good glue. Second, Record the evidence in the table. Third, choose another ingredient from the book. And lastly, add it to the table and record evidence that it will make a good glue. In this next slide, we are given the table of contents of the Handbook of Interesting Ingredients. In the table of contents, we can find the different ingredients that we can read about in the book in alphabetical order. So remember, we're reading first about gelatin. And as you can see in the arrow, gelatin starts on page 20. Here's the page of gelatin. I know earlier I mentioned that it starts on page 20, but for the sake of this lesson, we're going to use page 21, the next page. And we're going to specifically look at the cause and effects section. Listen up. Cause and effect. Gelatin can make a mixture slippery. Gelatin can make a mixture thick. Gelatin can make a mixture gel. And lastly, gelatin can hold ingredients in a mixture together. So just from what I read, I know that gelatin can hold ingredients in a mixture together. That might be a useful property in a strong glue mixture. So I'm going to go back to the worksheet that I showed you earlier and record that evidence. So here's the worksheet that we went over earlier. Now we can record the evidence that we found in the handbook. 
So here I wrote, can hold ingredients in a mixture together for gelatin. Now it's going to be your turn. Remember, you're going to read about cornstarch, gelatin, corn syrup, and flour in the book. And you're looking for evidence about what will make a good glue and record it. So this will be a good time to pause your video. I hope you were able to read about the ingredients and look for evidence. I'm going to show you what I wrote. Here's my evidence for cornstarch. My evidence is sticky when it starts to dry, sticky when mixed with hot water. Gelatin makes a mixture gel can hold ingredients in the mixture together. Corn syrup can make the mixture sticky when dry. And flour, sticky when mixed with water, mixture is hard when dry. I'm wondering if you also wrote this same evidence or if you added on something new. In this next activity of our lesson, we will report multiple sources of evidence. So we will use this table to record our evidence from testing and reading. So we just read about these four ingredients. And we also graphed our strength test results. So do you remember what evidence did you find out about each ingredient? Go ahead and pause your video. Think about this question and maybe jot down your idea on a piece of paper. So I filled out the table from the earlier slide of evidence of good glue properties. Earlier, we were reading about evidence from our handbook. I'm going to read you and go over the evidence that I found from our strength test. So for cornstarch and water, I know that we had five washers that could hold. Flour and water, 10 washers. Corn syrup, four washers. And lastly, gelatin and water, about 14 washers. So this table just shows you that we gathered evidence from two different sources. We used the handbook of interesting ingredients, our reference book, and we used evidence from our strength test. So based on the evidence we gathered today, what ideas do you have about which ingredients will make a strong glue? Go ahead and pause your video. Think about this question. I'll share my thinking next. Based on what we read, and what we found out from our strength test, I think that the gelatin and water makes a strong glue. Do you have a similar idea? A different idea? In this last activity of our lesson, we will add a third design goal. So we've been figuring out which ingredients will make sticky, strong glue. What are some of the different sources where we have been getting evidence about glue ingredients? Go ahead and pause your video, jot down your idea on a piece of paper, and think about what are some sources that we've been using. I'll share my idea next. Here's my idea. I know that we've been using test results, observation, and information from a reference book. Now we're going to think about adding a new design goal for our glue. I want us to think of back to this book that we read, Jess Makes Hair Gel. Here's what my question is. Why did Jess add new design goals partway through designing his hair gel? Do you have an idea? Do you remember? Here's what I remember. The lime gelatin turned his hair green and made his hair smell like lime. He changed his design goal so his hair gel would not smell and it would be clear. We're also going to take a look back at this design goal poster that we made. So we already decided that our school glue needs to be sticky and strong. So let's talk about the other possible properties we listed and which ones might be useful in a glue for school use. So here are the possible glue properties. Spreadable, smooth, sticky, and strong. Now we will work together to decide on one new property to add to our list of design goals. So I am guessing and thinking about what could be our goal that we can add. Remember, we already have our glue needs to be sticky and strong. Go ahead and jot down your idea on what goal might we add to our glue. I want to remind you that in this chapter, we're investigating this question. How can mixtures be designed to have certain properties? 
That is the end of our lesson today. I hope you learned a lot and I hope you had fun. Today in our lesson, we used our graphing tool to graph the results of our string tests. We read in our interesting book of Handbook of Ingredients, our reference book, about the ingredients that we tested and we wrote down our evidence of these ingredients of what would make it a good glue. And lastly, we're starting to think about a third design goal that we will go over more in the next lessons. I hope you had a great time and I'll see you next time.